Hello friends! Pain is a very unpleasant sensation, which signals that there is a problem with the body and that a person needs to get rid of its source. Every year, $50 billion is spent on the development of new pain medications. Acute pain can disappear quickly if the cause is identified and eliminated. Chronic pain can last for years, having a very negative effect on the person's quality of life. And in today's video, I will tell you about the most severe pain that a person can experience. Do you know that itchy feeling when an eyelash gets stuck in your eye? That's terrible, right? Now imagine that feeling only a million times worse. The man worked as a plumber, and one day he was soldering some copper pipes for a client with his boss. He held the pipes with a wrench while his boss attached the solder with a torch. Apparently, the man's boss wasn't a very smart person. Having used the torch to melt the solder on the pipe, he noticed a break in the pipeline, so he took a hammer and hit the pipe to straighten it. However, as soon as he did, a piece of molten solder flew at the man. He didn't have time to react, and the solder went straight into his eye, burning through his pupil. It caused severe pain. Blinking was painful for several days, as well as keeping his eyes open or closed. It felt as if someone was constantly rubbing coarse sand into the man's eye. The solder burned a hole in the cornea, the transparent outer layer of the front of the eye. Luckily, the plumber didn't lose his eyesight, and surprisingly, the injury healed in less than one week. The Gimpy Gimpy plant is an Australian horror that is known for its sting, which causes severe pain that lasts for weeks, months, or even years. The plant is covered in tiny hairs, which contain neurotoxins in their tips. When touched, they break off and get absorbed into the skin, causing prolonged pain. It all starts with a burning sensation, which gets stronger in the next half an hour, and then doesn't go away for several hours or days, causing sleepless agony. In the worst case scenario, it can last even longer. Ernie Ryder, an Australian ranger, learned it the hard way. One day in 1963, Ernie was working in the forest and made a big mistake. He got too close to the Gimpy Gimpy. Ernie accidentally stepped on the plant and when he removed his foot, the branch shot up and hit him in the face and torso. A burning pain, ten times stronger than any other he had ever felt, instantly ripped through his body. It was unbearable. Ernie couldn't work or sleep for two days, and even when he finally managed to get some rest, the agony still lasted for another two weeks. Even after that, the pain didn't completely disappear. The burning sensation lasted for two whole years, returning whenever he took a cold shower. During a vacation in hot countries, the cool waters of the ocean are the best way to relax. But do you know what can ruin such a vacation? Having someone swim up to a person from behind, pull out an electric drill, and begin to ruthlessly drill into their lower back. That would be truly horrible, right? Unfortunately, that's exactly what the Irokanji jellyfish sting feels like. The size of these tiny jellyfish is one cubic centimeter, about the size of a human thumbnail, or even smaller. They are virtually invisible in the Australian waters, where they live. And that's very bad, because they are some of the most venomous jellyfish in the world. Despite their small size, the sting of the Irukanji jellyfish is a hundred times stronger than that of a cobra. Accidentally touching one of these jellyfish feels a bit like a mosquito bite at first, but then the pain intensifies, and the person starts feeling nauseous and gets a severe headache, which is followed by excruciating cramps in all of the muscles of the body. This is called the Irukanji syndrome. It's best to get out of the water and seek medical attention before it starts, because the situation would only get worse. The nurses told stories of patients who vomited every minute for 12 consecutive hours and sweated profusely. In some rare cases, these tiny jellyfish even cause death. In addition to all the pain, the sting causes such a high level of anxiety that victims experience an overwhelming sense of impending doom. Bullet ants grow to over two and a half centimeters in length, and their sting is so painful that many believe that it is the worst kind of pain. 
Schmidt described a bullet ant sting in the leg as walking on hot coals with a 7-centimeter nail in his heel. Moreover, the pain can last all day with frequent waves of agony. And if one gets stung while wandering through the tropical forests of Central or South America, where these ants live, then it's highly unlikely that it would just be one sting. The fact is that after a sting, the bullet ant releases a substance that tells its relatives to also attack the victim. That's just too much. The bullet ants inject a Panera toxin, which doesn't only cause throbbing pain, but also temporary paralysis, fever, irregular heartbeat, but at least it's not fatal. In Brazil, there are indigenous people, Satere Maue, that use these ants in rituals. At the age of only 13 years, the children of the tribe must stick their hand inside gloves filled with bullet ants for 10 minutes. Australian comedian Hamish Blake tried to perform the ritual, but the pain was so intense that he passed out and had to be hospitalized. Fortunately, he escaped with only a swollen hand. Of course, having a time machine would be incredibly cool, but there are things in our history that one definitely wouldn't want to return to. For example, eye surgery in the 18th century of England. Healthcare wasn't as advanced at that time. There was no anesthesia, so the surgeons performed complex and often horrific procedures without any anesthetic. And all this was usually done in an operating theater with curious spectators around. Therefore, people were very afraid of getting surgeries, and for good reason. English surgeon John Taylor was the first one to try to correct amblyopia, a childhood disease known as lazy eye, which causes decreased vision in the affected eye. Currently, it is usually treated by bandaging the healthy eye so that the weak one can develop better. However, Taylor's method was truly awful. He put the patient on the operating table and opened the sick eye with a metal instrument. He then took surgical scissors, brought them to the patient's lazy eye, and stuck them right into the corner, making a deep incision. All this time, the unfortunate patient had to remain conscious. Taylor cut off a piece of the undeveloped eye. As he explained, he cut the nerves of the oculomotor muscle, which controls the movement of the eyeball. But it turned out that Taylor was just a fraud. He cut off random pieces of the patient's eye, and then he covered the healthy eye after the surgery to hide his poor work. Since there was nothing to compare it to, it seemed that the lazy eye was corrected. However, in reality, the patient didn't just endure an excruciatingly painful operation, but also remained with a poorly seeing eye. These small fish live in the waters of the Amazon basin in South America, where they hunt for prey. Spikes on the top of their gills allow them to attach themselves to larger fish and feed on their blood like underwater vampires. However, even scarier tales about these fish have been going around the world for 200 years. These fish were believed to be able to settle in other places with the help of their spikes. The most recent incident occurred in 1997, when a man was swimming in the Itiocaria River in Brazil. He wanted to pee, but suddenly, he felt excruciating pain. Something swam up to the man and got stuck. It was a candiru. The terrible fish got into his urethra, and the spikes firmly clung to the skin, which didn't allow the fish to be pulled out. It took many hours in an operating room to remove this monster. Arthritis is joint pain associated with old age, but there is an excruciating form of it that can occur at any age and is very painful. It is gout, a throbbing inflammation of the joints. It is caused by excessive consumption of red meat, alcohol, and sweets. All of these contain purine, a common compound. When the body breaks down purine, it releases uric acid. If one eats a lot of food rich in purine, they get an abundance of this acid, which forms urate crystals that accumulates in the joints. Gout most commonly develops in the big toe, as uric acid is temperature sensitive. The uric acid crystallizes in the cold, and since the big toe is the farthest from the heart, it is the coldest part of the body. When a person has gout, they literally have hundreds of small sharp crystals in their joints that rub against the flesh, which makes it irritated and swollen. 
This is incredibly painful because the affected areas become very sensitive and one can toss and turn in bed for hours, trying to get comfortable. In the past, gout was called the disease of kings because only the rich could afford to eat so much. Surprisingly, being associated with wealth turned this condition into a status symbol of the 18th century aristocracy, which went around proudly showing off their big toes. Friends, that's all for today. Like the video, subscribe to our channel, and we'll see you next time.